Mercy is a hero in Overwatch that majority of low ranked players do not know how to properly play. Mercy has a low skill floor and a high skill ceiling, but playing Mercy properly is quite easy to do if you know how to do it. The biggest thing I see low ranked players do on Mercy is heal botting. Mercy is not a heavy healing hero. She doesn't do any burst healing, and she can only heal one person at a time unless you are ulting. The entire point of Mercy is to damage boost one of your DPS, not healing them when they're at full health or just get tickled by a diva halfway across the map. Like I just mentioned, the most valuable thing in Mercy's kit is her damage boost. On average, you want to spend about 60-70% to 70 of your uptime damage boosting, and the other percentile healing. But when should you be damage boosting? When your team isn't in danger of dying, you should be damage boosting. Or when a teammate uses an ability or an ultimate that would greatly benefit from a damage boost, like Soldier Visor or Hog Hook. Now, there are some characters that are better being damage boosted than others. Majority of the best possible characters you could damage boost, however, are his scan heroes like Soldier, Cassidy, Ash, and Bastion. But the absolute best DPS you can damage boost is Sojourn. You allow her to basically one shot some most squishies as it does 243 damage to the head. Choosing a DPS and damage boosting them for a majority of the time is called pocketing. This is what you want to be doing most of the time on Mercy. The only times where you shouldn't be pocketing your DPS is if another teammate is in danger of dying and your other support can't save them. If you're dead or coming back from spawn, if you're reviving someone, or if you're using your ult which can damage boost your entire team. Now, moving on to Mercy's ult Valkyrie, if used correctly, is an extremely impactful ultimate. The ultimate is best used to damage boost your entire team at once, as the beam latches onto everyone who is within a 5 meter radius of the person the beam is attached to. Also worth noting, it does the same thing with healing. It also makes Mercy extremely mobile, increasing her guardian angel speed. This makes Mercy excruciatingly hard to kill, so it is very useful for stalling the objective. And for those Battle Mercy players, it also gives Mercy's gun infinite ammo, so if so, you can go into teamfights guns blazing. I would not recommend doing this though, unless there is a Widowmaker, Ash or Ana that is hard scoping and it makes it very easy to headshot them. Now, moving on to another thing low ranked players do often is bad revives. To all the low elo players out there, stop rezzing in the fucking open or when the enemy can see you. The number of times I see Mercy players flying into the middle of the team fight trying to res a, bad, a dead teammate thinking they will get away with it is insane. If you can see the enemy, they can see you. A good res is usually attributed to who you are reviving the time in the team fight the res takes place and how many resources the enemy invent invested into getting the kill. A good res should be taken behind some sort of cover. An example of this is if your Cassidy dies right next to a corner, you hide at the edge of the corner out of the enemy's line of sight allowing you to safely res. Another example is if your tank is shielding or body blocking for you which allows you to safely res. A bad res impacts the game severely, with it mostly affecting your team, which the Mercy resed, as the Mercy is likely to be killed during her res animation if it was a bad res, causing your team to be down the initially killed player and the Mercy. It also leaves your team down as support, just don't res in the open and you will be fine. Another thing I see a lot of players do, and I myself am guilty of this, and that's overusing Guardian Angel. Yes, it is difficult to master Mercy's movement, and if you do master it, it is fun to show it off. But flying through the air gives away your position and makes you an extremely easy target to hit. Instead, what you want to be doing is using Guardian Angel as a way to move extremely quickly to cover or a low health teammate that is in dire need of healing without making yourself vulnerable for an extended period of time. The penultimate topic we are going to cover is Mercy's positioning. 
I have briefly mentioned Mercy's positioning throughout the video, but to summarize it properly, Mercy's positioning is a very covered, stay out of line of sight kind of character. There is no reason to be looking at the enemy unless you are pinging them or shooting them. And the only time you should be in the enemy's line of sight is if the person you are pocketing or healing is in the middle of the open. The final thing we are going to cover is Mercy's gun. You want to use it in self-defense. By that, I mean if there is no teammates you can fly to, and the only option is to whip out your Glock. Yes, Battle Mercy is fun, but if you're going to do damage, there is literally the entire support roster, which does way better damage than Mercy. The only other times are one, if you're ulting and you see an out of position enemy who is isolated, and your team will benefit from not damage boosting or healing, and would more benefit from the enemy being killed, or two, if your team has basically won the team fight and the enemy heroes are just delaying their defeat. To summarize everything, Mercy is best used to damage boost a DPS and only healing if you need to. Not using res in the open and using it when you're safe or behind cover and your team is not in danger of dying. Getting the most value out of your ultimate by damage boosting your team when they are not critical and healing when they are, and not overusing your guardian angel, and finally, only using the BB gun in self-defense. I hope you all enjoyed this video, and I also help, hope it helped. Stay safe and healthy. I hope you all have an amazing remainder of your day, and I hope to see you all in the next video. Until then.